Farmers all across this country are fearing for their livelihoods, what we sing about, as hundreds of workers at processing plants are testing positive for COVID-19, forcing a few facilities to close their doors. For hog farmers like Wanda Patchy, the future is uncertain. I'm Wanda Patchy. My husband Chuck and I are farmers from Southern Minnesota. We raise hogs and we also raise corn and soybeans. We have about 2,200 head of hogs on this farm. So they come to our farm when they're about three weeks old. They weigh 13 to 15 pounds. We keep them until they're about 280 pounds. So the only hogs that are on our farm is what we call market hogs. A lot of what's happening right now has to do with the Smithfield plant. We do not sell our pigs to Smithfield, but whatever happens in the industry affects everybody. Smithfield employs about 3,700 people. They have had over 600 people test positive for COVID-19. Initially, they were going to close down three days over Easter. They now are closed indefinitely. When you use the word indefinitely, that is uncertain. And so uh, prices have decreased substantially and we are now looking at probably less than half price of what it was prior to that. That is not near enough income to pay the bills. From a personal standpoint, I had a really, really hard day on Easter. Not only was my family not here, but that's when I heard the news about the Smithfield plant closing because I knew what that meant. I was trying to prepare Easter dinner for my husband and I, and I just stopped at the stove and I just couldn't go on. I had to break down. I just cried and I cried it. I am not a crier. This is not normal for me at all. I'm really very, very concerned of what's gonna happen. Wanda, you, before the break, were saying you had another moment of just I would describe it as a fear and emotion, but this is tough. What decisions will you have to make if you can't get rid of those animals on your farm? We're gonna have to euthanize animals. And we're not farmers to do that. We love what we do. We're producing healthy and um, you know abundant food for consumers and we're gonna kill our animals. Wanda, when I was looking at your video diary, I wanted to know from you, how does it feel to know there's no food shortage in this country? but there are people who can't get food. There are exactly. farmers who can't get rid of or sell yes. what you are raising. It just defies the way we think. You are, you are there to feed people. There's no shortage of food exactly. in America, but people by the millions go to bed without a meal yes. and wake up to nothing. And that is so hard for me to wrap my head around. How did we get here? I mean, I don't, I don't understand it. I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. And we've been far, farming for over 40 years. We've been through a lot, but never in my life have I seen this. Being from Texas, a granddaughter of a sharecropper who raised hogs as well, I've covered yeah. farmers across this country. Um, and we have talked in the past about government assistance, helping farmers. What happens now? What kind of aid during this crisis is available to you? Yeah, so last Friday, uh, we did hear that there will be some aid coming through from our uh, federal government, um, which don't get me wrong, I'm appreciative of that. But as we've now analyzed exactly what that aid needs, it falls far short of what we're going to need out here. I know our uh, commodity organizations are you know, talking to the federal government and explaining exactly what's going on here. So we're hoping they kind of come in, either make some changes or do an additional aid package here. But if we don't do this, we are going to lose farmers by the thousands. I mean, there's just no way that we can continue. Do you have any idea what a plant like a Smithfield should do? I mean, the nature of what they do there requires people to be shoulder to shoulder. The nature yeah. of factory work, I don't care if you're on an assembly line putting something together or a processing plant, you will never walk into something like that where social distancing is possible and the company be as productive as they That's have That's exactly been. right. So what do you see as a solution here for these plants? What can they do to help farmers like you? Well, within the plants, what I'm hearing is they're putting up the plexiglass between workers. I mean, they're doing what they can but I can't help but think in the end that they're just not gonna have the same throughput. 
So again, that's, you know, we're not, they're not going to be up at that 20,000. This is just my opinion, but I don't see how they could be up at that 20,000 head a day because they're going to have to put in those practices, right? So again, that's going to mean some shortages on the, on the processing end. Is there anything that gives you hope right now? I mean, is there anything, I know you've got your family, thank God everybody's healthy. Your daughters couldn't spend Easter together, but they are fine. What gives you some hope right now, Juan? So actually the timing of this might be pretty good. Um, we just started planting yesterday. The sunshine, being out in the fields, that hope of, okay, we're planting a new crop, you know, seeing life as the plant grows, that, that helps. And I also think when I start feeling myself go down the hole, I have to really come back to, I have a place to live, I have food to eat, and I have my family and I have my faith. That's how I pull myself back out. Wanda, you're an amazing woman. Thank you for feeding us with food on our tables and thank you for feeding my soul with that video diary. Sharing your story means so much to our audience and thank you so much. We'll keep in contact with you and follow your journey. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you.